This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to show a movie about a family who faces danger and uncertainty in a lonely outpost on Mars. It is a drama, science fiction, and thriller film called Settlers. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Being a prisoner in your own home is a feeling that amounts to a different level of fear. What makes matters worse is if you live in a greatly unfamiliar environment, let alone a planet. For parents, protecting their children is a given instinct. It knows no bounds, even if it means cultivating a life outside their comfort zone. As the Earth is not what it once was anymore, the family in the film faces new challenges in their new home. Reza and Issa raise their nine-year-old daughter, Remy, in a deserted outpost on Mars. Apart from living in an inhospitable place, they lead normal and simple lives. The family grows their own vegetables and tends to some farm animals. One night, Reza comes home troubled, but he still makes time to tuck Remy in bed. Before sleeping, Remy claims that there are strangers nearby, but her father assures her that there is no one to worry about. The following day, the family wakes up to horror upon seeing a message commanding them to leave on their window. Reza becomes alarmed, so he brings out his weapon for extra security. He guards the house all day long by watching over the window while Remy becomes increasingly afraid of her father's agitation. The couple subtly talks about the situation, and they seemingly have an idea who is behind the commotion. Out of concern, Remy points out that their piglet is not eaten for the whole day, but Ilsa dismisses its importance. While her parents are comforting each other, Remy sneaks out to feed the piglet. Realizing that her daughter is outside, Ilsa calls her, but a group of bandits run toward the house. Ilsa rushes to her daughter while Reza comes out to shoot at other bandits from the horizon. She stabs a bandit near Remy before carrying her inside. However, Reza stays outside to continuously guard the house and look out for other intruders. He manages to shoot a bandit from afar with Ilsa's supervision. The film shows how Ilsa and Reza are survivalists, and their seemingly strong nature. Living in an unfamiliar place has taught them to become vigilant toward any kind of disturbance. This science fiction film focuses on the horrors of dealing with humans, rather than the usual aliens we see in the same genre. Humans did not only bring livestock and crops to Mars, but violence as well. For Remy, the moment is surreal and frightening as she has never seen anyone apart from her parents. Not long after, Ilsa and Remy go out of the house to gather weapons from the fallen bandits while Reza walks around the property. That night, Ilsa and Remy spend the night by themselves. They hear distant footsteps, so they take shelter in a hidden and dark room. At daybreak, Ilsa becomes more worried about her husband, checking outside every once in a while. Out of nowhere, the mother and daughter are stunned to see Jerry, an armed man inside their house. He holds the two at gunpoint while instructing Ilsa to drop her blade. At that moment, Ilsa realizes that her husband is dead and is killed by the armed man. Jerry claims ownership of the property right away. He claims that his parents used to live and where he was raised. Furthermore, Jerry questions Ilsa and Reza about his parents' whereabouts, but she fails to answer. Jerry gives Ilsa an option to leave or stay and be with him. He tries to integrate himself into the family and demands 30 days to prove himself worthy to give the surviving mother and daughter. Ilsa subtly agrees and asks Jerry if they could give Reza a proper burial. At the simple ceremony they prepared, Jerry shows respect to the family's grief. Days pass and Jerry settles in the house while repairing broken stuff. While safeguarding his weaponry, Remy takes note of his daily routines while Ilsa tends to their basic needs. One day, Ilsa unearths a small robot-like tool that Jerry has fixed. It runs directly to Remy, and she names it Steve. It seems that Jerry has completely overtaken Reza's role as the leader of the household. He seems familiar with the place because he grew up there and is fully adjusted in his recent stay. Ilsa remains uncomfortable, but she could also use some help around the property. For Remy, the closest thing she could get to a friend is Steve, but she plays with it with excitement. The scenes differentiate how contrasted Reza and Jerry's abilities are. At dinner, Jerry and Ilsa share about each other. She reveals that they never killed his parents and his mother was already dead when they arrived. According to her, their transport shut down when they entered the planet, and Jerry's father took them in. Upon realizing they were from Earth, Jerry's father held them at gunpoint, and Ilsa killed him in self-defense. Almost 30 days have passed, and Jerry starts to be affectionate with Ilsa. Despite some discomfort, she gives in to his desires, and they become intimate. After seeing her mother share an intimate time with Jerry, Remy decides to leave home. She walks along the dry and empty path that surrounds their home while Steve follows her behind. After some time, Remy realizes that they live in a dome and the place is enclosed by glass. She screams in frustration and takes a break, but not long after, she finds a chamber. Remy approaches the chamber and enters once its big metal doors open before her. She finds nothing but a pit of emptiness, and before she can escape, the doors close, leaving her alone in the dark. She falls asleep, and after some time, Jerry finds her and brings her home. As she gains consciousness, Jerry reminds Remy that there's nothing to find outside the property but sand and rock. 
he further assures her that the place that they have can provide everything that they need, and she should be thankful for that. Since the beginning of the film, Remy has shown profound interest in exploring. Although she grew up in the outpost and has never seen anything else all her life, she believes that there is more to see. In this scene, her anger fuels her hunger for exploration even more. The thought that all there is to see is sand and dust is deeply ingrained into her mind, but Remy wants to see it for herself. She feels like her pets and animals have more freedom than her. Still upset with her mother's growing relationship with Jerry, Remy becomes distant. Ilsa apologizes and makes Remy understand that no one can replace her father, but to no avail. The following day, Jerry brings out Reza's guitar and asks Ilsa to sing while he plays. The sight of Ilsa holding a guitar brings back memories of Reza for Remy. She starts to break into tears and locks herself in a room. Her mother attempts to calm her down, but Remy expresses hate instead. Back in the kitchen, Jerry hints that he is tired of guarding himself against Ilsa. He shows that he's beginning to trust her, meaning they could start a life together. Claiming that the weapon is weighing him down, Jerry places his gun on the table before heading outside. He goes out to try and ease Remy's emotions, but as he turns back, he finds Ilsa holding him at gunpoint. However, Ilsa realizes that the gun is empty, despite several times trying to shoot Jerry. Ilsa spots a knife from the kitchen counter and runs to it to finish Jerry off, but he runs inside to stop her. Amid the commotion, Remy stands, clueless and helpless outside the house, unsure of what to do. Shortly after, Jerry steps out of the house bloodied, and at that moment, Remy realizes that she is now an orphan. She attempts to run away, but Jerry gets to her and assures her that she is safe. He promises her that he will protect her no matter what as long as she stays. In tears, Remy nods her head and promises to behave. They both bury Ilsa beside Reza's grave as Remy takes her time to grieve. The film reveals that Ilsa never felt any sense of connection toward Jerry. Everything she did was an act in hopes of getting him to trust her. However, her plan caused her demise, which also put her daughter in danger. Remy's only access to survival is abiding by Jerry's rule. She only agrees to be in his care merely because she has no other choice. The life on the outpost is the only life that she's ever known. She accepts her new life, even if it means living under the same roof as her parents' killer. Years have passed, and Remy is now a teenager. She lives with Jerry, but after all those years, she's still silent around him. She's taken over her mom's duty of tending to their needs, including cooking and growing their food. Despite her resentment towards him, they seemingly found comfort in each other's presence. One night, Jerry gives Remy a drawing of her and comments on how she looks like her mother. Remy breaks into tears and leans on Jerry for a hug. Both of them share a kiss as they embrace, but Remy instantly regrets it and runs off to her room. For the following days, Remy avoids any type of interaction with Jerry. Instead, she spends most of her time with Steve while doing her daily chores. Jerry finally confronts Remy about what happened to be rid of the awkwardness circling between them. He introduces the idea of having a baby together, but Remy despises the concept and claims that it will never happen. They get into an argument after Jerry finds out that Remy has plans of running away. That night, Jerry takes the mask away from her, so she runs after him to have it back. The tension between them grows, and Jerry ends up hitting Remy, which renders her unconscious. Later that evening, Remy wakes up only to find herself tied to her bed while Jerry is inside. Remy is hysterical after Jerry gets on top of her, while comforting her that everything will be okay. Jerry becomes desperate to be with a woman, hinting at it as Remy became older. His desires become dwarfed by the punishing environment, and it unleashes his dark side. All this time, he did not protect Remy in a fatherly way, but rather in a predatory one. He keeps holding on to the fact that it will only take time for her to learn to love him. It is only then that Remy realizes that she is used, and Jerry sees her as an object and means for having a child. He forces himself on her, but Steve enters the room and blasts him in the neck with the machine's power drilling attachment. In return, Jerry shoots the robot while he rushes outside to tend to his wounds. Remy finds the opportunity to escape from the ropes and Jerry. She finds him in the kitchen bloodied and decides to hold him at gunpoint. Seeing his vulnerability, Remy fatally shoots him without remorse. At sunrise, Remy buries Jerry in a place similar to her parents' grave. She spends the next days alone while taking care of the farm animals and repairing Steve. As her loneliness ensues, she gets random visions of people around the house and becomes more disturbed by it. The time comes that Remy cannot take being on the property anymore, so she decides to start her new journey. She entrusts the house and the animals to Steve before looking at the graves one last time. Remy enters the dark chamber, which is a gateway to the property's exit. There, she finds a vast world where a new journey of uncertainty awaits her. 
One of the prominent themes in the film is the importance of family. In the beginning, it showcases Remy's healthy and happy upbringing. Her parents used to teach her things every step of the way and allowed her to think freely. It helped her carry out values that fueled her self-growth, despite being an orphan at an early age. She grew up with an alpha male, but it doesn't mean that she'll submit to his orders. The movie is slow burning, but that doesn't mean that the tension between the characters is undeniably effective in illustrating a sense of dread to the viewers. Seeing nothing but vast lands on the horizon, Remy's bravery renders a strong message of self-sufficiency. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.